Principles of Sports Nutrition. Only dopes smoke dope. Maybe you've heard this before, this aphorism, which, by the way, has very little bearing on reality, unless, of course, you think that physicists and scientists and school principals and police officers and firefighters are all dopes. And we can go on and on. How about Olympic athletes? How about politicians? How about people down the street? How about people you know that don't reveal the truth about what they do? So, of course, there are some strange, bizarre examples of people that smoke pot or dope. But we'll confine this discussion to what dope actually means in the world of banned substances substances that are banned when it comes to athletic use and prescription and taking advantage of pharmaceutical doping agents that enhance athletic performance. The term doping refers to the administration of drug-like substances, including supplements, known to enhance performance. Doping has been defined by the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, as the administration or the use by a competing athlete of any substance foreign to the body or of any physiological substance taken in abnormal quantity or taken by an abnormal route of entry into the body with the sole intention of increasing in an artificial or unfair manner his or her performance in competition. So there are numerous doping agents and these substances include a wide range of pharmacological components and they're classified selectively as stimulants, narcotics, anabolic agents, diuretics, peptide hormones, mimetics and their analogs, agents with anti-estrogenic activity, and masking agents. So doping refers to the introduction of an adulterant additive or impurity in order to produce a deliberate change. So in the context of doping in the athletic world, dope relates to the substance that they're taking. It could be an anabolic steroid, it could be growth hormone, it could be a thyroid hormone. It's not always and often it's not a steroid like testosterone. Before it came to mean a narcotic or narcotics considered as a group, Dope, D-O-P-E, was borrowed into English from the Dutch word dupe, D-O-O-P, or sauce, translated, sauce. So throughout the 19th century, this term dope or sauce meant gravy, literally. In the North Midland United States, particularly Ohio, dope is still heard today as a term for a topping on ice cream, such as syrup or a chocolate or fruit sauce. Yes, ma'am, one scoop or two. And would you like some dope on that chocolate ice cream? In the South, particularly in South Carolina, dope means a cola-flavored soft drink. The term might be related to the northern usage as a reference to the sweet syrup base of a cola drink. However, folk wisdom has it that dope recalls the inclusion of minute amounts of cocaine in the original Atlanta recipe for Coca-Cola which was named after this exotic ingredient. Doping methods include blood doping, which involves the reinfusion or transfusion of blood or red blood cells and erythropoietin, or the acronym for this hormonal substance, erythropoietin, is EPO. You've heard about this, the Lance Armstrong fiasco and other Tour de France cyclists and mainly cyclists use EPO to enhance the production of hemoglobin and red blood cells. More oxygen means more stamina, more power, more capacity. Doping also pertains to the pharmacological, chemical, and physical manipulation of urine, such as catheterization, urine substitution, and inhibition of renal excretion. How gross. So in the world of amateur, professional, and competitive sport, dope doping and doping agents are the broadest terms used to describe any number of substances or procedures 
which may be banned, restricted, or permitted by the various committees and international organizations governing sport and athletic competition. So in the context of athletic performance, is the statement only dopes, use dope, true or not? The answer to this question is philosophical and subject to debate. Perhaps this statement is too absolute and denies or fails to consider the reasons why the athletes are taking the dope. I'll try and answer that question in this continuing series on the principles of sports nutrition. But in the meantime, if you want more information on doping guidelines, what you can and cannot ingest or consume if you're a competitive, performance-focused athlete, Olympic elite athlete training and competition, go to cces.ca, that's the Canadian Center for Ethics and Sport, or the World Anti-Doping Agency, which is wada-ama.org, wada dash ama.org or finally the International Olympic Committee olympic.org